Rolex watch, a suit, a vacation. I mean, it's as cheap as you get. What you'd expect from the UN. Okay, how do we know that China is not, is not in some way bribing the presidency itself? How do we not know that? I mean, how can we not know? How can we know that? Why would he do a deal like this? On, in, on whose behalf would he do a deal like this? When even the AFL-CIO opposed it. I'm asking a question. I don't have an answer to it. I, I don't see where Okay, I don't have an answer. All I know is this. This so-called free trade deal is such, it, is such a sellout of the American worker. It is such a boost for the Asian, Asian economy at our expense. And this is after what Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton did to us. By the way, when we say Bill Clinton now, on, please don't say Bill Clinton, say the Clintons. They were, she was a co-president when he gave us NAFTA, when he gave us GATT, when he sold us down the river. And I remember it very well. I was on the radio in the 90s. China was buying up entire manufacturing plants in the Midwest and transporting them down to the last lathe on the factory floor to build up their new nation. And they never should have been allowed to do that. But Bill Clinton let them do it. Was it just Bill Clinton or was Hillary involved? Believe me, he was doing more than uh, playing uh, with Monica Lewinsky. And she was doing more than looking the other way. They the ones who did the deal with China, letting them do that. Sandy Berger was involved at that time. Sox Berger, the one who smuggled state secrets out in his underwear. Now a big lobbyist for, for who? China. Madeleine Albright, that half, that halfwit. What is she doing now? Last I checked, she was a big lobbyist for China. You didn't know any of this. See, some of us actually remember the news and put two and two together. All right, I'm overwhelming you. I get it. Many of you said, I, I can't take it. The guy knows what he's talking about. There's only so much I can take. It's, he's firing at, it me, at, at me like a machine gun. I can't take it anymore. Back off, Mike. See, that's the feedback mechanism I have that makes me great in radio. So I'm going to back off, Mike. I'm going to go soft now. I'm not going to talk about meatballs exactly. I'm not going to do lifestyle questions exactly. I'm not going to tell you my dog Teddy is sleeping next to me exactly. I'm going to go a little lighter now. I'm going to back off. We're going to go into like Beethoven, even Beethoven, after he brings you up to a certain point. In the next piece, he has to now bring it down, doesn't he? Because you'd, you'd, go, you'd go deaf. you get a heart attack if you listen to him keep going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Then eventually he has to go quiet down. So I'm going to give you a new, uh, a new part of the symphony when I come back. But the main question is, will, do you think it's possible that Democrats realize the rogue president is so crazy now and has lurched so far to the left, both in his inability or unwillingness to fight ISIS and in his sellout to Asia, that they're going to try to remove him from office in some way? And then we have uh, Donald Trump on at the bottom of the hour. And if that's not enough of a show for you, I suggest you go listen to baseball. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. <laughs> You're listening to Michael Savage on Hot Talk 560 KSFO. It is uh, a nightmare out there. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It's a nightmare. When you see that Obama's trying to force through an Asian trade deal, that even the AFL-CIO and the crazy crackpot left-wing lunatic Bernie Sanders oppose, which I oppose for obvious reasons because it's not free trade at all. It's a sellout to these Asian nations. This is pure corruption. There has been payoffs up and down the line. And uh, when you see a thing like this and you see that Obama is impotent with regard to ISIS or lying about it, suddenly uh, Putin moves in saying enough is enough. They're threatening not only Syria but then Russia and then Europe. I'm taking control. And in a week he puts them on, sends them on the run. So he's been shown for what he is now to all thinking people in the entire Western world. Right in front of our eyes. Now... So the Democrats thinking only of 2016 so they can hold on to the grift that they've been uh, stealing all these years under Obama. They don't want to let go of it. They've had it pretty good now. They've had eight good years of stealing and robbing from the Treasury, bankrupting the country as fast as they can. Why would they want to let go of such a sweet deal as that? So they want to put a Democrat in the office. 
but they see that Obama is so dangerously has so dangerously moved to the far left that they have to figure a way to put in the stooge Biden, who will be sort of Uncle Joe, centrist, not as frightening, won't come after your guns right away. You know, just kind of a gaffy old, silly old uncle. Would the Democrats seek to remove the president uh, in some way? Now, I don't know the mechanism. They're not going to declare him unfit for office because they would, uh, as we just said in the 25th Amendment, it would require a statement that he's unfit for office. Now, who's going to declare him unfit for office? How is that ever going to happen? So by what means could they put Biden in it? See, what I'm saying is there's something wrong with the picture. For them to, to get this guy Biden up out of nowhere, he's a nobody to begin with. He always was a stooge. And in his latter years, he became even more of a, a laugh line. So why are they suddenly floating him? Because they know Hillary. Uh, Hillary's in trouble for sure, but that's not the reason. That's what I'm getting at. They're not floating Biden for 2016. I had an intuitive feeling that they're floating Biden to replace Obama during Obama's uh, remainder of his term. That's what I, I said. Is that even possible? I mean, I realize it's a radical idea, but either we're talking or we're not talking. Either we can express thoughts or we can't express thoughts. That's all. I'm just asking a question here. Just asking. Could they do it? Would they do it? Because Obama's made it bad for the re-election for Hillary. They're afraid that he's, he's so far to the left that he, what he wants to do is, is even so f farther to the left that she has no chance in 2016. Even if she got the nomination, which likely she will, they figure that, hey, forget about it. This guy is moving this country in such a direction that even the average moron out there, the idiots who elected Obama, even the moron white guy, the idiot who knows nothing, the guy who has a ratchet set in his brain. Mm. You know, the guy, all he hears in his head is the, the sound of, 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 of uh, hex nuts coming off a tire. He doesn't think. Music to his ear is a hex nut coming off a wheel. They're saying even he might come to understand that Obama's dangerous and vote for a Republican. See? So uh, is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. Tire shop. I told you I'd slow it down, did I? Donald Trump, when I return right here on the Savage Nation, talk about the so-called trade deal Putin and ISIS. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Line uh, 10. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Donald, are you there? I'm with you, Michael. I'm always, I'm always with you, actually. <laughs> well, I didn't know it for a while. I was hammering your staff. Where is he? Why won't he come on? What are the advisors saying? We have three topics, but a new one just popped up. Donald, on the trade deal with Asia, I know where you stand. This is not free trade. Even the AFL-CIO Bernie Crackpot Sanders opposes it. Tell the audience, please, why you oppose the trade deal Obama's trying to force down our throats. Well, first of all, it's countries that are going to allow China to come through the back door. You know, they're going to get the biggest piece of it. You watch, as they always do. We're losing almost $400 billion a year with China. But... Almost as important. It's all manipulation. We don't do anything about currency manipulation. We don't know how they're manipulating. The single biggest threat we have is currency manipulation that these countries, and in particular Japan and now China and others, not only now China, now China for years, what they've been doing to us, Michael, with trade manipulation, with monetary manipulation is incredible on trade. So what they do is they make it impossible for our companies to compete. And all it is going to do is take out jobs. And the reason it's going past and the reason you have some people supporting it on both Democrat and Republican side is because the lobbyists and the special interests are pushing them hard for certain companies that are big beneficiaries of this. But the country is a loser and it means jobs are going out of the United States as usual. I read the deal in detail, the best I could do it, Mr. Trump, and I find that small mom-and-pop car part dealers, clothing manufacturers in the U.S. will probably go out of business from foreign-made goods, which will flood into the United States. How can Obama get away with this when even the AFL, the AFL-CIO opposes it? How is that possible? Well, the lobbyists representing the companies that want this to happen have contributed to Obama. But these are all lobbyists and special interests. And frankly, they probably represent the countries involved, the 11 countries. But 
they also represent companies that want this to happen because it's good for them but bad for our country. And essentially what it does is it takes jobs out of our country, and as usual, it takes money out of our country. And watch what happens. China is going to come through the back door, and they're going to become a part of it later on at, e- at an even better deal. Some- how can the Democrat, but Donald, how can the Democrats push a trade deal like this after the devastation that NAFTA has wrought and the exportation? I'd have to tell you, you know better than I do what it's done to our indigenous industrial base and our, and our workers. How can they do this again when they know that even the unions oppose them? Are they going to be able to get a- around the unions? Well, NAFTA has been a complete and total disaster, and this one is going to be probably, I don't know necessarily, much smaller. Uh, this is going to be another disaster for the for the country. You know, what it really does, it's sucking the money out of us, and it's sucking our jobs away, and it's sucking our base. Our manufacturing is going to become non-existent. I mean, these deals are just made for the special interests, made for the lobbyists. The lobbyists are making a fortune. And they're taking our, they're taking everything. They're just stripping our country. That's All right, let's go to, I'm sorry, Donald. Donald, here's another huge issue. Last night, the very nice neurosurgeon, Ben Carson, seems to be channeling uh, some lunatics when he said, I think he's channeling John Bolton, the uh, guy who looks like a, a walrus, when he said that um, we, U.S. should not allow Russian jets to bomb in Syria. And he wants dogfights in Syria between United States Air Force jets and Russians. What's happening with, with Carson? Is he going crazy? No, it's, uh, you know, the whole thing is over there is, uh, first of all, we're backing rebels. You know, they talk about the free Syrian re- rebels. Nobody knows who they are. Here we go again. You know, we backed rebels going into all sorts of places. We were backing a government that turned out to be a fictitious government in Iraq. And look what happened to Iraq. Uh, you look at Gaddafi, what happened over there with Libya. I mean, Libya, we backed rebels. You know what the rebels did to the ambassador and to the other people. Okay, these are the rebels we backed. Now, again, we're backing rebels. And as far as I'm concerned, if if Russia wants to start getting into the quagmire, you know, we're in there for $4 trillion in the Middle East over the last number of years. We spent $2 trillion in Iraq alone. What do we have for it? We have nothing. You know what's going to happen with Iraq, Michael, is that Iran, right now as we speak, is trying to take over Iraq. They're taking it over. With the oil reserves, the biggest in the world, among the biggest in the world. It's unbelievable. So if Russia... Oh, that, go yeah, in, but that, thanks to Obama, they'll be able to do the, the new Persia. I mean, the ancient Persia was incorporating the land called Iraq, as you well know. And with a little help from John Kerry and Obama, we'll see uh, uh, Persia emerge. How about Vladimir Putin? I happen to support him. He's the only one taking on ISIS. He's the only one who's degraded them in a week while Obama has lied for a year now about taking them on. Do you support or oppose Russia's bombing campaign against ISIS? Well, it's not a question of supporting. I think it's wonderful that Russia is, and by the way, as of today, they're really hitting ISIS hard. And you know why? Because Russia doesn't want ISIS going into Russia. It's very simple, okay? Right. And they were saying, right. oh, he's hitting other people. He's hitting rebels that we're friendly with. I spoke to a general three days ago. He doesn't even know who these rebels We don't even know who these rebels are. <laughs> they could be ISIS. They could be worse than anybody that we have. They could be worse than Assad. So, no, I'm surprised when I hear people talking like, oh, gee, isn't it terrible? They want us to start World War III in Syria. You know that. I do know that. They're not thinking carefully. Have you met Vladimir Putin? Yes. You have? One time, yes, a long time ago. Do you feel... That that... With a break, by the way. I'm saying, if you, if you do win the presidency, and I certainly hope you do, do you feel that you could do business with Vladimir Yes, I do. And that's what I do. You know, deals are people. Deals aren't deals. Deals are people. Yes, Mm. I think I would get along very well. I had the big Miss Universe pageant in, believe it or not, in Moscow two years ago. I got Mm. so many of the Russian leaders and the top, top people in Russia. I mean, honestly, these are people that are looking to do things. And, you know, Putin cannot stand Obama, hates him, and doesn't respect him. And that's not off to a great start. But how about this? He he leaves Obama a couple of days ago. The following day later, he starts bombing, and nobody knew it was going to happen, right? That yes. shows a total lack of respect. With that being said, if he wants to bomb ISIS, congratulations. Welcome to it. Let's save a little money and fix up our roads and fix up our bridges and tunnels and schools and airports. You know, we're in there for, okay, $4 trillion between everything for the last number of years. Four trillion dollars we've got to fix up our country and we owe mm-hmm. a trillion by the way 
You know who gets the oil, most of the oil out of Iraq? By the way, you know who takes it, right? You know who the China, China, China does. Yeah, China. China gets the oil. You know how much they've invested in the war? Zero. Zero. Now, speaking of China, I read that China's uh, sending in special forces to take on ISIS as well in an Israeli publication, Debka, a week ago, because the Chinese want to take.